The day the curfew was announced, it made me realize how alone I was. My heart, it was pounding. I needed air. I needed to be outdoors. So I put on my mask and made my way to the lobby of my building and then opened the door and rushed out into the night. I walked, keeping my head down, averting my eyes. I walked a few blocks heading downtown when the ambulance sirens reached me. I had heard them for weeks, but now they were more real, more relevant. And that was when he came into my mind. The ambulance sirens brought him to me. He was in an ambulance the last time I saw him. I reached his apartment too late. His best friend called that he was dying and he had asked for me. So I took a cab downtown and got there just when the ambulance door closed. And I could see him. His eyes were closed, his mouth was open. And the ambulance pulled away into the dark wintry mist. I walked and walked one street after another. I shut off my phone and felt liberated. I was alone in a city under a curfew and I was breaking the curfew and I felt free. Free to allow the city to bring its memories to me. That street corner, that bar, now all closed up and dark, was a place I had been to once, doing something with some people. That hotel was a place I had gotten all dressed up and attended a party. That apartment building was where I had once lived for a few months, decades ago. That park was where I had been with a lover, and that was when Norman became real to me. as if he were sitting on the bench, waiting for me as he had done so many years ago. You see, most of the places I was passing held memories of when we had spent time together. I had met Norman when I first moved to New York City from the Midwest, and he was everything I imagined the city to be. He was two decades and a half older. He was angry and tired. He was bitter and lonely. He always looked like a bear lost in the woods. He always wore an old jacket and dark slacks. His beard always needed trimming. His shoes always needed repair and his thick black hair always needed combing. His large piercing eyes needed comfort and his mournfulness needed patience. His wife had left him and moved back to South America, leaving him penniless. He had won a playwriting award when he was much younger, but nobody cared about his work anymore. So he worked at a telemarketing office and that is where I met him. I also worked there part-time. I saw an imaginary Norman sitting on a bench and I sat beside him and I looked up at his imaginary large sad face listening to him telling me how I should leave, telling me that life was cruel and that I would suffer like him because I too believed in something like he once did. When I argued that I refused to be defeated, I refused to suffer, he told me that was my youth making me arrogant and of course I was going to suffer and cry out in distress because I would only experience disappointment and heartache. The darkness slowly turned the city into one enormous shadow. The tall buildings stood silent in the stillness. Only the occasional scream of an ambulance siren shattered it. When Norman kissed me, his kisses were more like tears. When he tried to speak to me with tenderness, his words could only sound harsh and accusing. I realize now his concern for me was too much for him. His feelings were too demanding and his drinking 
helped him swallow his hurt and resentment. I left the park and I walked downtown and found his old apartment and stood outside it in the crisscross amber lamppost light and looked up to the top floor where was once his window. I stood there like I once did many years ago, barely 21, barely able to comprehend what he meant to me, waiting for him to come home, seeing him hobble drunkenly down the street towards his front door. And when seeing me, waiting to surprise him, shouting that I should go away and leave him to suffer alone that he didn't need my pity, even though it wasn't pity that I felt for him, it was awe. I was in awe of someone who had reached for something unattainable and had failed. Failing made him majestic to my young, impressionable, anxious being. I was taken in by his tragic nature since I had come to the same city he had years before, struggling to become something I could never be anywhere else. He failed that quest. I was determined I would not. I walked back uptown and once again became aware of the ambulance sirens screeching through the otherworldly deserted streets. I felt the city wait on my shoulders and in my memory I saw the ambulance take Norman away to die in the hospital. His soul had died years earlier. It just took a little longer for body to die as well. When I got back home to my apartment I put on the light and I realized that I had been searching. I had been searching for myself in the darkened city, now made even more bare, not only by the virus, but now the curfew. I was looking for signposts and markings to assure me that I had been here. I was searching for a testament that I did have memories. I had friends, I had lovers. My God, I demanded that I be as real as the weeping siren.